Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Welcome back to how to build a blog in Elementor. In the previous lesson, we went over the basics of WordPress and discussed the structure of our blog. And in this lesson, we'll learn about the WordPress dashboard and set up the essential settings for our website. So let's jump right in and get started. We'll begin in the WordPress dashboard, where we have a bird's eye view of our site. This screen displays vital information about our website and allows us to know exactly what's going on on our site. This screen can be accessed by clicking on Dashboard on the left side of the screen, or when previewing our site by hovering over the site's name and choosing Dashboard. Now let's get familiar with the dashboard layout. On the left, we have our WordPress menu where we can access our posts and media files that we've uploaded to our site, such as images or PDFs. We can also view and edit our site pages and more. We'll go over these options in more detail in our next few lessons. WordPress allows us to install plugins, which are kind of like apps we can add to WordPress to expand its functionality. Just like the Elementor options we see here, most plugins we install will add new options to this menu. If we find this menu distracting or just want a cleaner layout, we can collapse the menu by clicking here. Click it again to expand it. At the top of the screen, we'll find the toolbar, also known as the admin bar, which is present on every page we view. This can be quite useful because it provides quick access to options that are used most often, like creating a new page or editing a specific template on the page. In case we want to hide this toolbar from view, we can do so by going to Users, and then Find, and click on the user we're currently logged in as. Then we'll just uncheck Show Toolbar when viewing the site. Now that we know where everything is located, it's time to set up our site's general settings. So in the menu, go to Settings. We'll change the name of our site and give it a tagline, which is a short description of our site. The admin email is used for sending critical notifications about our site, such as backup updates, spam alerts, and more. Below, we can change the WordPress dashboard language if applicable. Next, we'll set up the time zone, which will be used to show changes on our site. We can choose either a specific city or UTC, Coordinated Universal Time. And lastly, we have the option to change the date and time format to what we're most comfortable with. If our work week starts on a different day than the default of Monday, we can update that here. Once we're done, we'll click Save Changes. Great, now we'll head over to Settings, Reading. As mentioned before, WordPress was created first and foremost for building and managing blogs. So by default, the website's homepage is set to our latest posts. We can change the setting by choosing Static Page and then selecting the right page from the dropdown. Note, if you have not yet created a designated home page, you can also select the default sample page that comes in the WordPress installation to temporarily be displayed until you've created a home page. Soon we'll see how this option can be set automatically, but since we don't have a home page yet, we'll leave this option as is for now. Below, we'll find options to manage our post's display from how many posts are displayed on a page to showing full text or just an excerpt from the article. When working on a brand new site, like in our case, it's recommended to click this checkbox to discourage search engines from indexing this site. We'll come back later when our site's ready and uncheck this box to make sure our new site is indexed with the right content. Click on Save Changes and let's continue to our next order of business, the Discussion tab. Here, we can set up the discussion guidelines for our blog. We'll uncheck the first checkbox, attempt to notify any blogs linked to from the post, which is an outdated setting from before modern SEO practices, and these days may be considered spam. Next, we'll deselect the second checkbox, allow link notifications from other blogs, pingbacks and trackbacks, on new posts, which can promote spam content on our site. We also have the option to decide whether or not to allow users to comment on our posts. 
Allowing commenting is generally recommended because it encourages engagement and helps search engines recognize that this is a page that is updated regularly. If we do want other people commenting on our site, we can find other comment settings below, such as who can comment, how comments get approved, what guest comments look like, and more. Once we're done setting up our comments, we'll click Save Changes. Next, we'll take a look at permalinks. The permalink settings affect the structure of our page's URLs. By default, our site's links are set to plain, which displays them in a way that doesn't describe the page's content and is also considered bad practice for SEO. Change it to post name and click Save Changes. And with that, our site's basic settings are all set. In the next lesson, we'll learn all about Elementor kits, what they are, and how we can use them to create our blog website in no time. See you there!